An exit is also possible for one of the best strikers around Europe, Victor Gyokeresh. His agent, Asan Chetinkaya, was at the game against Benfica, will spend some days in Lisbon to follow and monitor the situation around the striker because there is big interest in Gyokeresh. More than 50 goals contributions this season between goals and assists, doing fantastic sporting. The release clause is 100 million euros and sporting insists on 100 million euros. It's not going to be easy at all to negotiate about that. When you see in the media 50 or 60 million euros, the expectation is to be way more than this for Gyokeresh and to be close to the release, close 100 million euros. There is interest from Arsenal. Arsenal have been regularly in attendance to follow Victor Gyokeresh, but he's not the only name on the list. They will sign an important striker in the summer. Gyokeresh is appreciated, but they still have to decide what they want to do. And Ladies and gentlemen, uh, update there from Fabrizio Romano in relation to Ukares. Arsenal interested, but you're looking at a hundred million euros that Sporting are going to demand. Now, Arsenal fans, do you believe this very potent, very dangerous, very productive young-ish striker? Do you think he is the right individual for Arsenal? I want to say young is 25. He's not in the, the latter stages of his career. He'll be 26 by the start of next season. So he's young enough, but he isn't a baby. He's got that experience. He has sort of miles on the clock. 100 million euros. I'd love to get Arsenal fans' take on this. We know he's productive. We know that he's dangerous. We know he can score goals. He has European experience. Obviously played prior to uh, going to uh, Sporting Lisbon in, in the championship. He was obviously part of Brighton. Didn't actually, when they were in the Premier League, he didn't play any games, um, I believe, in the Premier League for Brighton. But he's been in and around the UK um, for, for a, a prolonged period. So the idea of him settling is going to be okay. But 100 million euros is a lot of money. How do Arsenal fans feel about that? At the same time, and now this links into... Chelsea, this links into West Ham, this links into Manchester United. Ivan Tony's price tag, according to sources, is believed to only now be 30 to 40 million pounds. Now, what I find very interesting about this is a few weeks ago, I spoke about Arsenal and could they be allowing certain narratives, certain stories about Eucharist and um, Alexander Isak to be pushed out there in the media to help with public negotiations to drive the price of Ivan Tony down. It's, it was felt for a long time that Arsenal wanted him. He wanted Arsenal. It was a match made in heaven. But could the links to other players be a ploy to try and get Ivan Tony for a lot less than the 80 to 100 million that was being quoted by sources from Brentford? But with Chelsea, Arsenal, West Ham, there are other publications that link Man United to Ivan Tony. If he can be purchased for 30 to 40 million, it's a no-brainer for me. Genuinely, no cap, absolutely zero. If, absolutely if, Ivan Tony is available for 30 to 40 million, as a Man United fan, please go and get him. Please go and sign him. As a, I'm not even going to call him an understudy for Rasmus Hoyland. I'm, as, as a strike partner, whether it's starting some games together, whether it's rotation, supporting each other in training, being part of a group and a team and a squad. I just feel a player with the profile of Tony could teach so much to Rasmus Hoyland, especially about the hold-up play, how to find space. I also think he would be, Ivan Tony, a very potent addition to Manchester United's squad and would give us so many more strings to our bow in the attack. I also look at Arsenal's situation and think, I know your career is good. But 100 million versus potentially 30, 35, 40 million. What else you could do with that money? I think Ivan Tony would be an amazing signing for them. Chelsea need more players of that ilk. And I understand West Ham are involved with him. I mean, this with respect to West Ham. I think if Arsenal, Man United, Chelsea are involved, I think he's less likely to pick up West Ham. Well, let's say win the Europa League this year and they're in the Champions League. That could change things. But Ivan Tony for 30 to 40 million. Or Eucharist, a hundred of million, as Fabrizio has claimed. Give us your thoughts and your feelings on that, people. I really want to know. Now, I'm going to come back to Arsenal in a minute because there's another story circulating about them. But I wanted to move on to Liverpool for a moment. Reports that El Adihad will 
make a, a their first offer to sign Mo Salah from Li- Liverpool this summer for around 80 million euros. Now, that feels somewhat light, if I'm being honest. I still think Mo Salah is one of the best attackers in the world. I believe his ability to any any team, any team in, in Saudi Arabia, and I mean this because the standard of football, with all due respect, right now, is not um is, is not on the level in, in my humble opinion of a um of, of the premier league or a la liga or anything along those lines he will kill it he will kill it over there in that league i think it's the same squad that fabinho's in and kante's in and a few others like that i'm not too sure is that it's not i don't know all the, yeah that's benzema's team i, I thought it was benzema obviously going to leave this summer so they're looking to sort of bring somebody else in instead I understand why, why why the Saudis want Mo Salah. I can understand the attraction for Mo Salah as well, the finances that he's personally being offered, and how he can utilize those those that money, both domestically and internationally, in a lot of the causes um, that Mo Salah is so passionate about. And I think as well, being such a big star in the Arab world, it, it would just be an absolute dream come true for everybody. But from Liverpool's perspective. Is 80 million euros enough? Is that enough money to genuinely, and I mean this with respect, replace him? Because I've seen links to Jard Bowen. I mean this with all, it's it's never going to be anywhere near Mo Salah, in my opinion. Although Bowen's very good. I've seen T-Links of Pedro Neto, and I think Pedro Neto is so talented, but it would be a no from me due to the abundance of injuries that he has. So who's the replacement? How do, you, how do they do this? Or maybe there isn't a replacement. Maybe they look as in like for like. Maybe they look for a more creative player on the right-hand side and invest the money in, in, into a genuinely prolific number nine. Maybe you move Gakpo on as well. You, you do go and buy that Pedro Neto, that, that, that Bowen figure that's you're going, to be, you're going to contribute, but not be the main individual. And maybe then you go big on a on a, on a number nine or an up-and-coming striker that you think is going to bang in lots and lots of goals. And I think also it really does depend. Again, you've got to look at it this way. Ruben Almarin is reported to be the next manager. If Almarin goes and they sell Mo Salah, could Jukarist be the player that Liverpool sign? He'll know the manager. It's a massive club. They've got a great squad. They've got the history and the heritage. So I, I think Liverpool may have to look beyond the like-for-like like replacement for Mo Salah. So if you are linked to a, to a Bowen, and I'm just using his name as an example, maybe there's a wider plan of how they're going to sort of reposition the team for somebody else to be the main goal contributor um, as Salah has been for the last few years. But give me your thoughts and your feelings on that in the comments section below. And moving back to Arsenal, I saw this story the other day from LiveScore who said that Rafael Leao is on Arsenal's top uh, transfer targets this summer, according to Port- Portugal- Portuguese sources. And I'm probably going to trigger people with this opinion. Why am I not convinced about Rafael Leal? What is it about Rafael Leal that I just don't quite get? I don't know. <laughs> he's I'm, obviously I'm talking to myself right now. I need to see, read your comments. There's just something about him where I think the prices you see him quoted at 80, 90, 100 million pounds. Is he worth that? I know he's 24. I know he's a good age. But is that where Arsenal need to spend their money? I don't know. Martinez's position. If a new number nine comes in, you'll have Gabriel Jesus that moves into those wide areas. What about Leal? And I'm not talking about, don't, don't give me one ability. Oh, he's dribbling's much better or he's crossing much better. Is he, when you're going to spend 80 plus million, is he, is he exponentially better than Gabriel Jesus and Martinelli? Genuine question. Is he? And if you, if you think he is, uh, this is not a. I want I want to say this in a way that doesn't trigger people because I know the world is very sensitive. 
I'm not trying to say that Rafael was crap. I'm not convinced he's as good as some people make him out to be. People talk about being the next world-class star. I don't think he's that good. But how much better is he really than Martinelli and Gabriel Jesus in wide positions? Only plays on the left-hand side. So, you know, as far as I'm aware, looking here at his profile, because I want to make sure that I get this, I get this right. You know, I was looking at all seasons that he's played. He's played a few games at centre forward and he's played a couple of one, three games on the right wing, but predominantly he plays the vast majority of his career on the left. So he's not overly versatile. I don't get it. I don't get this link to Arsenal. I understand it if Martinelli suddenly goes to Barcelona and then there's a hole there. Maybe it makes sense. But as of right now, I'm not quite buying into this one, but let me know what you think and feel. As a roundup, remember, Mo Salah, could he be on his way out of Liverpool? What should Liverpool do in your opinions? Ivan Tony, Man United, get yourselves involved. If it's 30 to 40 million and Arsenal are genuinely looking elsewhere as the reports claim, surely we're in a better position than West Ham and Chelsea to go and sign him. We need that second and that backup striker. And Arsenal fans, Fabrizio says that uh, Jukores is a top priority for you and an important position for um, Arsenal to fill this summer. Give us your thoughts. Give us your feelings. Until next time, take care. Goodbye. God bless. And I'll see you all again soon. Peace.